Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you ready for his power? Yes. Father, we thank you for our Bible study tonight. Power time, revelation time, study time, impartation time. And Lord, we pray every one of us here will receive of your power in Jesus' name. You will turn our lives around for the better. Lift up your people, enlighten your people, empower your people, transform your people and turn their lives around. Open our eyes of understanding as we study your word tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We're studying tonight from Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, I read to you from verse 40. And there came a leper unto him, that he is unto Christ, unto Jesus, Savior, Lord, healer, deliverer, beseeching him, begging him, pleading with him, praying to him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. He said, I want to be clean, and I know you can do it, and if you're willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion. His compassion will not fail on your side. Put forth his hand and touched him and says unto him, I will be thou clean. He's always willing. In your case, he will. And as soon as he has spoken, immediately, the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. And he straightway charged him, and false we sent him away, and says unto him, See thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way. Show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Verse 45, but he went out and began to publish it much and to blaze abroad the matter in so much that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city but was without in desert places and they came to him from every quarter. Tonight, the topic is the testimony of a cleansed leper to the whole nation. The testimony of a cleansed leper to the whole nation. This cleansing of the leper is very instructive. And it's a lot to learn, a lot to glean, a lot to receive from the passage. Each sinner has a lot to learn here. Each believer has a lot to learn here. The whole church has a lot to learn here. And the nation, the nation of Israel in particular. That's why Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. And then the priest having examined you and will see that you are clean. It will be a testimony to them to pass on to the whole nation. That's how significant this miracle of the cleansing of the leper is. We learn from here, number one, he came, he pleaded, he prayed. If we're going to receive the touch of the Lord, if we're going to receive his cleansing, there must be that volition within us and that decision within us. We come, we plead, we pray. That's what he did. Number two, he knelt down. And he worshipped in humility. He said, I'm not worthy. I'm a leper. I'm outside the camp. I'm unclean. I should not come to your presence. He knelt down. And he worshipped him because he knew he wasn't qualified. When we come to the presence of the Lord, and we want to receive cleansing, forgiveness, salvation, freedom, deliverance, 
healing, miracle, a turning around of everything in our lives, we need to come before the Lord, kneeling, worshiping, all in humility. Number three, he was specific in prayer. Make me clean. His prayer was not like a general nebulous thing that went all over and was scattered about. Bless me. Say what you want. He was specific and definite. He said, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. What do you need? Salvation? Be definite. You have guilt in your heart and you want to release from that guilt. Be definite. There's accusation of the enemy of the devil and he's throwing arrows of accusation at you. You are bad. You are evil. You are rejected. You'll die. You'll go to hell. And all that confusion is there and you want peace of mind, assurance that the love of God is still for you. Be very definite and specific. He was. Number four, he expressed faith in Christ's power. He expressed faith in Christ's power. He said, I don't know of any other leper you have healed since you started, but I know you will do it for me. I'll be number one. There's somebody there number one today. He said, I've not seen any other leper. I read about them in the Old Testament. I heard about Naaman. I heard about this and that. But me now, I've not seen in my generation. And I will be the number one. He expressed his faith in Christ's power. When you come to the Lord, you express your faith. And you say, Lord, I know you can do it. And if thou be willing, you can make me clean. And thank God you are clean tonight. Number five, the Lord revealed his will and his willingness. You must hear from the Lord. You want salvation? You see, it is will, of course. You want to go to heaven? You see, it is will, of course. You want deliverance? You see, it is will, of course. You want a breaking of every yoke and a destruction of all the power of the devil in your life? You must be sure of the will and the willingness of the Lord. And the Lord Jesus Christ expressed his will and willingness. I will be thou clean. Number six. The miracle of cleansing was real and verifiable. The miracle of cleansing was real and verifiable. That's why I said, go show yourself. Leprosy had eaten off your fingers, and leprosy had eaten off your leaves, and leprosy has removed your eyelids, and leprosy had made your flesh like the flesh of a frog. Now you come to me, and you are healed. Go show yourself. The fingers are back. The color is back. The complexion is back. And the kind of frog-like skin, everything has become smooth. This is real, and this is verifiable. Go show yourself unto the priest. The miracle you receive tonight, and every time you pray, the miracle is going to be verifiable. His miracle was verifiable. Number seven, it was to be a testimony to the whole nation, and this is the Christ, our Savior. And your testimony will go far and wide. The Lord is going to do something for you that will not be confined in the locality of your family. It will go to every place of your community in Jesus' name. Somebody there shout, Amen. <laughs> the testimony of a cleansed leper to the whole nation. Three things we're looking at tonight. Number one, the plague and the desperation of an unclean leper. The plague and the desperation of an unclean leper. It was the plague of leprosy. And there was nobody that could heal him. And there was only one in the nation. His name, Jesus Christ. And because of that, the man was desperate. This is my day. I must touch him today. This is your day. You must touch him today. Number two, the power and the demonstration of an uncommon liberator. Uncommon like Brito, Jesus Christ is not comparable with any other one. He is unique. 
He is uncommon. It's incomparable. And we have here point number two, the power and the demonstration of an uncommon liberation. And now number three is the pain of disobeying our uncompromising Lord. The pain of disobeying our uncompromising Lord. The leper was a stranger uh, to Christ. He, he was meeting Christ for the first time. And Jesus Christ gave him a command. He couldn't understand. And he didn't ask for an explanation of that commandment. And maybe the commandment to you might be strange to you, unknown to you. Because Jesus said, don't tell any man now. Just go your way straight to where the high priest is. And you tell the priest there, and it will be a testimony for them, for them to be able to tell the whole nation. And a man did not understand in the joy of the miracle. He forgot everything that Jesus said, and he blazed it abroad and published it everywhere. And then we see the consequence that Jesus Christ could no more come to the people because they will mob him from every place. So he went away, and the people had to go far away to search for him, to seek for him, and to touch him too. Three things. Uh, number one is uh, the plague and the desperation of an unclean leper. Number two is the power and demonstration of an uncommon liberation. That liberation, that cleansing was uncommon because it came from the uncommon liberator. Number three is the pain of disobeying our uncompromising Lord. Number one now, we come to Mark chapter 1, and I'm reading from verse 14. Mark chapter 1, we're reading from verse 14. And there came a leper to him. You must come. You must exercise your will. Exercise your volition. You must make up your mind. You must come to the Lord. And it is when you come to the Lord, there will be that connection between you and the Lord and the eternal life you need, the cleansing you need, the forgiveness you need, the salvation you need, and the freedom you need, and the breaking of every yoke you need will come to your life. We're told, and there came a leper to him, beseeching him, praying to him, pleading with him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Come to Luke chapter 4 and verse 27. Luke chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 27. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elias, Elisha, the prophet. And none of them was cleansed, saving Naaman the Syrian. The Lord was uh, telling the children of Israel the history of their nation, the religious history, the spiritual history, and the absence of miracle in the nation. I was talking about something like, uh, you know, uh, more than 1,000 years before this time. And before the time of Naaman, from the time of uh, Numbers unto the time of Naaman, no leper was healed. And from the time of Naaman until Malachi, no leper was cleansed. And from the time of Malachi until this time now that this leper came, no leper was healed. And Jesus was telling them, how scanty miracle had been and how absent the miracle especially the miracle of cleansing the leper had been and he said at the time of elisha although there were many lepers in the land only one Naaman, the leper was healed and now you will see then how special this plague of leprosy was not only that it was a special uh, the miracle that happened eventually the uh, shame that went with that a uh, kind of a uh, situation leviticus chapter 13 i'm reading from verse 44 leviticus chapter 13 i'm reading from verse 44 so will you understand the background leprosy was not like a headache 
Leprosy he was not like, you know, the general problem of the disease or the sickness that people had. It was something incurable. It's some, something pathetic. It was something shameful. It was something that brought reproach to them. It was something that took them outside the camp. Leviticus chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 44. Then the priest shall look upon it, and behold, if the rising of the soul be white reddish in his, uh, in his bulge head, or in his bulge forehead, as the leprosy appears in the skin of the flesh, he is a leprous man, he is unclean. He is a leprous man. He is unclean. The implication of that is he will not be allowed in their temple. He will not be allowed in their tabernacle. He will not be allowed in their sanctuary. He will not be allowed in their synagogue. He will not be allowed in their community. He will be in a separate place, a separate locality. That's why the man was desperate. At me is the fellowship of everybody. I cannot touch anything good. I cannot taste anything good. And the people look at me at a distance because I'm unclean. And the priest shall pronounce him utterly unclean. And his plague is in his head. Look at verse 45. And the leper in whom the plague is, his clothes shall be wrenched, and his sedge bare, and he shall put a covering upon his upper lip and shall cry unclean unclean if was coming in the way he'll be shouting unclean unclean so that the other israelites who are supposed to be clean hygienically they're supposed to be clean physically they will get out of the way for him because they shouldn't come near him he is unclean verse 46 all the days wherein the plague shall be in him it shall be defiled it's unclean it's defiled he is unclean he shall dwell alone he shall dwell alone Wife cannot be with him, husband cannot be with her, children cannot be with him. Why? Because it's contagious. It will get on them. It will contaminate them. And so he will be defiled and he shall be alone. Dwell alone. Without the calm shall his habitation be. He will miss the beauty of everything around because he's confined somewhere because of the plague of Leprosy, you can tell then why was the spirit? I must get rid of this problem. Is there any problem in your life that people know and then they avoid you and they keep you at a distance? And you must come to realize that if the Lord is going to take that away, you must do as this leper did. You understand it's a plague. You understand, this makes you desperate and this makes people look at you and keep you at arm's length at a distance. But today, the Lord will break that yoke. The Lord will bring cleansing and the Lord will bring a turning around in Jesus' name. This reproach will not remain. That reproach will not abide. Leviticus chapter 22, and I'm reading from verse 3. Leviticus chapter 22, and we're looking at verse 3. Say unto them, Whosoever he be of your seed among your generations that goes unto the holy thing which the children of Israel shall hallow unto the Lord, having his uncleanness upon him, that soul shall be cut off from my presence. I am the Lord. What that passage is saying is, say, for example, a leper wanted to use bold face. Who says I cannot go there? Who says I cannot be there? Who says I cannot be in the tabernacle? Who says I cannot be in the temple? Who says I cannot touch that holy thing? Who says when they're carrying those holy utensils in the house of God? Who says I cannot carry it you? And you say, leper. And he has been told he must not be there. If he used bold face and he said, leprosy or no leprosy, I will carry that thing. They will stone him dead because he has come to do what the unclean leper should not do. Look at verse 4. What man soever 
of the seed of Aaron is a leper or has a running issue, he shall not eat of the holy things. He said it doesn't matter the parentage. Even if Aaron is his father and he becomes a leper, then all the possibilities and the privileges of the priesthood will be denied him. As we study that, you understand spiritually, sinners are unclean. Spiritually, sinners cannot come to the presence of God. And spiritually, sinners, because they're spiritual lepers, they are barred from the kingdom of God. Come to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. What we've seen in the physical, when I want to see in the spiritual, unclean, unclean, and therefore the sinner, unclean, defiled, unrighteous, unholy, unacceptable, is kept at a distance. He cannot be in the presence of the Lord in his holy, eternal, everlasting sanctuary. We're coming to Romans chapter 1 verse 24. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness. Uncleanness, unclean character, unclean language, unclean behavior, unclean conversation, unclean lifestyle. He gave them over to uncleanness through the loss of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forevermore. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections, moral uncleanness, spiritual uncleanness, social uncleanness. It says he gave them up to vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And you find the uncleanness in society, among the men, among the women, in verse 27, and likewise also the men. Leaving the natural use of the woman, burnt in their lust one toward another. Men with men, walking that which is unseemly. Men with men, homosexuality. Men with men, walking that which is unseemly, unnatural, unacceptable. And it's not the will of God. And then it says, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. It's uh, one of the causes of HIV AIDS. Also like HIV AIDS, it's like leprosy. Incurable, incurable. And it makes people unclean. And it comes men and men, women and women, walking that which is un ungodly and uncomely. And even as they did not retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled, he wants us to be filled with the Holy Ghost, with the Holy Spirit. But these ones are filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, Debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boosters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. They do not only do that, not only do so, do the same, but they have pleasure in them that do them. All that is uncleanness. But as we come to the Lord and the Lord touches us, He'll touch our spirit. He'll touch our hearts. He'll touch our soul. He will touch our lives. Let the church say, Amen. He will make us clean in Jesus' name. But we must be as desperate as this man. 
and we come to Christ, the only one that can cleanse us. And praise the Lord, I want to tell you, Christ is here. He will cleanse every one of us in Jesus' name. Let's look at his power. Point number two now, the power and demonstration of an uncommon libration. I'm coming to Mark chapter 1, and I'm reading from verses 41 and 42. Mark chapter 1, verse 41. And Jesus moved with compassion. He moved with love. He moved with compassion. Sympathy, divine sympathy. You know, whatever you are going through, and becomes like a challenge to you, the Lord's compassion never fails. And that compassion is here tonight. He'll touch your life. He must touch your life around. He is more concerned for you than you are for yourself. And as you come to the Lord, it doesn't take him time. Immediately, he's going to answer your prayer. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and says unto him, I will be thou clean. I will be thou clean. He wills your blessing. He wills your miracle. He wills your transformation. And he wills your total deliverance tonight. You experience it in Jesus' name. I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately, somebody help me shout immediately. As Jesus changed, as his power changed, as his compassion changed, he'll manifest that today. Immediately, the leprosy departed from him and he was cleansed. And he was cleansed. I want you to understand, Jesus does not restrict himself to one method. And there are people that do not understand how Jesus works. They say, let Jesus touch me through the preacher. Let him lay hands on me so that I will know. I will feel that strength of the hand laid on me. And then the problem will go. Let's see that Jesus is not limited or restricted to just one method of cleansing the leper. We're coming to Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. I read from verse 12. And he entered. Who is the he that entered? Jesus Christ into a certain village. And there met him. Tell me. Ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. If it's only one leper, cleansing is sure. If they are ten, he doesn't have to touch them one by one by one by one. All of them, one word will cleanse everyone. And all of us here tonight, he doesn't have to come one by one. One word will cleanse us all. And one word will deliver us all. He's going to do it for you. And he will do it for me. And he will do it for every one of us. And then we're told in verse 13, and they lifted up their voices. And they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Have you noticed? They prayed differently. The other man said, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me whole. You can make me clean. Did he say that? You don't have to copy the prayer of another person. Pray as it comes out of your heart. God understands everybody's language. He understands your language. He understands your desire. And praise the Lord, he's going to give attention to you today. He said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Look at verse 14. And when he saw them... He said unto them, Go show yourselves to the priest. He didn't say, Be thou clean. He didn't say, Receive your miracle. He didn't say, Yes, I will be thou clean. But he said, Go show yourself to the priest. But you know, if you're going to show yourself to the priest, it means that you are cleansed, it means that you are healed. And it came to pass that as they went 
tell me. As they went, tell me. They were cleansed. Can I tell you, as we are going back home, that miracle will reach you. As we are going back home, that prayer you are praying, don't say, I didn't get anything, I didn't get anything. You will get something. As they went, they were cleansed. And you see the method of Jesus Christ. We're coming to Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, and I'm reading from verse 33. Matthew chapter 9, we're reading from verse 33. In verse 33, and when the devil was cast out, and they don't speak, the multitudes marvel, saying, it was never so seen in Israel. This cleansing of the leper tube, it was never so seen in Israel. It's been a long time now since the time of Naaman. It's not been seen like this in Israel. A new day has come for you. A new year has arrived for you. You will smile and laugh and rejoice this year. What has never been seen in your personal life and your family, it was never so seen in this community. You'll be the carrier of the miracle power of God in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 12. Mark chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 12. And immediately he arose and took up his bed. This is a man that four people are to carry. He was helpless. He was hopeless. And they were desperate. And they came to the Lord Jesus Christ. They couldn't enter him. And so they went to the roof and removed one of the tiles and then dropped him in the presence of Christ. Once you come to the presence of Christ, all your problems are solved. Spiritual problems, they are solved. Physical problems, they are solved. Matrimonial problems in your marriage, they are solved in Jesus' name. And that difficulty that is peculiar and you are even ashamed to tell anybody, tell Jesus, he'll take it away. I say, tell Jesus, he'll take it away. And he says, and when I went forth before them all is so much that they were all amazed and they glorified God saying, we never saw it on this fashion. What happened to this man? They never saw it on this fashion. Cleansing has come. I said purification has come. He will purify us. He will cleanse us. If you have seen the kind of leper and leprosy we're talking about, their skins are not smooth. And they lose feeling. They lose sensitivity. Because of that, they can scratch something. You know, and their hands might be getting hot. They won't feel it. And they can chop off the tips of their fingers. And they will not feel it because of uh, not having any feeling. And they can use any kind of material. If they are having some, uh, something itching them, they can scrub that place until blood is coming out. And they have no feeling of pain. That's why as he came and he said, you can make me clean. The Lord actually made him whole and spiritually what he had done for him in the physical, he'll do for us spiritually. For me, for me, for me, for me, he will do it. There's no impossibility in your spiritual life. Maybe you have a particular problem. The, the habit has become something that you're not sensitive of. And yet, it's destroying your prospect. It's destroying your future. Praise the Lord tonight. It will cleanse you. And uh, you don't have to pray long, long, long prayer and cry and shout and roll on the ground. Very simple. Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And people say, is that all the prayer you can pray? He has answered that prayer. Psalm 51. Psalm 51. I'm reading from verse 2. Psalm 51, verse 2. It says, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. 
cleanse me from my sin. Cleanse me from my sin. Uh, let's come to verse 7. Punch me with this soap, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. No matter how dirty we have been, and no matter how polluted we have been, and no matter how unholy we have been, and no matter how unrighteous we have been, cleansing has come today. Purging has come today. And renewal has come today. And righteousness has come today for every one of our lives in Jesus' name. I'm coming to verse 10. Look at verse 10. It says in verse 10, create in me a clean heart, O God. The heart is unclean. The heart is defiled. The heart is spotted. And the heart is uh, kind of unrighteous. But it says, you bring that to the Lord and you say, cleanse me and renew a right spirit within me. And thank God it will be done. For me, it will be done. I said, for me, it will be done. He will cleanse everyone. He will wash everyone. And it will set everyone free from everything that is unclean in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 6. And I'm reading here from verse 5. Isaiah chapter 6. And we're looking at it from verse 5. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone. Because I'm a man of unclean leaves. You see, uncleanness is not limited to just the flesh. This one, this is moral. This is character. This is behavior. And this is habit. It says, I'm a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts, then flew one of the seraphims. Unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken in with tongues from off the altar, and he laid it upon my mouth. Your time has come. I said, Your time has come. He laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy leaves, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. And thy sin purged. And remember, remember the miracle that the leper received was real. And it was verifiable. And the miracle of cleansing, of renewal, of revival, of a total washing and being made whole that you receive tonight will be real and verifiable in Jesus' name. Your wife can tell. Your husband can tell. Your children will notice, and your parents will notice that the cleansing has come, the miracle has come, and it's been done, verifiable in your life in Jesus' name. I'm looking at chapter 36 of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 36, 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. See, the Lord is not only thinking of cleanliness or cleansing of the leper. He's thinking of all the cleansing of everyone. And he says, I'll pour clean water upon you, sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. Then it says, from all your filthiness and from all your idols, I will cleanse you. From all idols... And from all filthiness, some dirty, dirty things, you want to get rid of them. And you're having difficulty getting rid of them yourself. Tonight, cleansing has come for you. In your heart also will I give you. And in your spirit will I put within you. I will take away. I will take away. He's the one to do it. He will do it tonight. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Did you say amen to that? And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and uh, do them. Cleansing has come. I said cleansing has come. Our soul will be cleansed. 
Spirit will be cleansed. Heart will be cleansed. Life will be cleansed. And our church will be clean. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26. That ye might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that ye might present it to himself, a glorious church, this sanctification, a glorious church, this deeper, higher, greater cleansing than we got before. He says that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Who wants to be without blemish, without blame, without wrinkle, without any dirt? You'll be as white as a lily. Your life will be as white as that of the lily. He'll do that for us in Jesus' name. First John chapter 1. In First John chapter 1, I read from verse 7. First John chapter 1 verse 7. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, tell me what he'll do for you. Cleanses us from all sin. Cleanses us from all sin. Verse 9, if we confess our sins, it's faithful and just to forgive us and to and to and to cleanse us from what? From all unrighteousness. Are you expecting any stain of unrighteousness to remain in your life? God forbid he will cleanse us all. Revelation chapter 19. I read from verse 7. Revelation chapter 19, verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb is come and his wife has made herself ready. You'll be ready. I'll be ready. The rapture is about to take place. We'll all be ready in Jesus' name. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. Clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. It's a gift coming from the Lord. And it's a gift he will give you and give me and give all of us. He'll do it tonight in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 1. We come to point number 3 now. In Mark chapter 1. The pain of disobeying our uncompromising Lord. We need to pay attention to this because maybe you can't understand this one. And you will call this disobedience. You'll see why it's disobedience. It tells us in chapter 1 of Mark, I'm reading from verse 43. In verse 43, and straightway, he charged him. And forthwith, he sent him away. And he says unto him, See thou say nothing to any man. See thou say nothing to any man. But go thy way and show thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Uh, look up here. Here is the situation. This cleansing of leprosy has not happened to any Israelite from the time the law of dealing with leprosy came except Miriam. As they were journeying to Canaan land, Miriam and Aaron said what they shouldn't have said. And the Lord came in wrath and indignation. And uh, leprosy came upon Miriam. And he took Miriam out of the camp. And they waited for seven days until she was cleansed. And the cleansing was confirmed. And she came back and they journeyed on. Apart from that, only Naaman, Naaman was a Syrian. He wasn't an Israelite. 
And when Naaman was cleansed, he didn't go to see any of the priests or high priests in Israel because he wasn't an Israelite. And after that time, this is the first person in centuries, many years, more than a thousand years, that this cleansing now happened since the law of the cleansing of the lepers was given in Leviticus chapter 13, chapter 14. And so, if this man had done what Jesus told him to do, number one, they'd be surprised. How could this happen? For thousands of years, this had not happened. This would be a testimony to them that this is not an ordinary prophet who has done this. It's not an ordinary preacher who has done this. It will show them this is the Messiah. It will show them this is the Christ. And they'll be forced to announce to the nation that the Messiah had come. That's why Jesus told him, don't cause confusion. Don't tell anybody. Go right to the priest and tell them. And all that Moses had prescribed that should be done, do it. Then it will be a testimony for them. As we look at this passage, very important. Number one, the peculiarity of silence before the people. Before the people, don't say anything don't tell anyone anything. The peculiarity of silence before the people. Number two, the purpose of showing himself to the priest. The purpose of showing himself to the priest. Number three, the publicity that separated the Savior from the populace. The publicity, the man went away and he spread it abroad and blessed the matter abroad. And Jesus could no more stay for the people to come to him so they can be cleansed from their sins. It was a kind of publicity that separated the Savior from the populace. Look at number one, the peculiarity of silence before the people. Verse 44, C that thou say nothing to any man. But go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. The peculiarity of silence. Was he the only one that Jesus told not to say anything after they had seen a marvelous miracle? Look at Matthew chapter 17 verse 9. Matthew chapter 17, verse 9. Here is the Mount of Transfiguration experience. And since Moses died, nobody had seen him on earth. And since Elijah went to heaven, nobody had seen him on earth. But Jesus Christ was now here. The very Son of God, our Messiah, the exalted King. And as he was on the Mount of Transfiguration, Moses showed up. And Elijah showed up. And uh, the disciples, three of them, Peter, James, and John, they saw them. And they were surprised. And Peter even said, don't let us leave this place. This is a glorious place. Let's make three tabernacles. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And then uh, they, they departed, they went to heaven. And the voice of God said, this is my beloved son in whom I well please, hear ye him. Look at verse 9 now, Matthew chapter 17, verse 9. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them. The same way he charged the lepers, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. Why? Because if they now went around saying something has happened, here is the Christ. If you didn't know before, here is he. Even Moses came. Even Elijah came. The children of Israel prematurely, they might trust at him, wanting to make him a king, and he might not go to Calvary. So that he was sacrificed for the sin of the whole of humanity. Therefore, Jesus said, it's peculiar, it's peculiar. The peculiarity of silence before the people. We're coming to Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 54. Luke chapter 8. 
reading from verse 54. It says in verse 54, and he put them all out and took her by the hand and called, saying, Mage, arise, she had been dead. And Jesus went there and then raised her up. And her spirit came again. And she arose straightway and commanded to give her meat. And her parents were astonished. But he charged them that they should tell no man what was done. And that's the same thing. The peculiarity of silence. Don't tell anyone. How could you do something great like this? And you'll say, don't tell any man. Look at something in John chapter 12. I read from verse 10. John chapter 12, verse 10. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death because that by reason of him, many Jews went away and believed on Jesus. Jesus raised Lazarus. He's an adult. Raised him from the dead. And the priests and the Jews knew about that. And he said, what else are we expecting? They said the Christ. They said the Messiah. They said the prophet. And they believed on him. And that angered the Pharisees. And he said, we're going to kill that Lazarus. And so, when he raised that 12-year-old daughter of Jairus, a little child, not to bring that child to the problem of all these Pharisees, he said, keep quiet about this. Let this child have a happy life, a peaceful life, and live her life. And so say nothing to anyone about it. Number one, the peculiarity of silence before the people. There might be situations here today that, you know, somebody hears the word of God and it's in the midst of the people that are very serious about another kind of religion. But this person says, I know I'm, the, I'm a child of God now. Jesus is my savior and Jesus is my Lord. And you might be in a hurry to go and, go and tell everybody that you are such a great, uh, you know, a person on the other side of the face, a religion. And now they go and tell everybody, go over the television, go over the radio and tell the whole nation you are now born again. You believe on the Lord Jesus. Christ. Well, some people are so serious for their religion that the father of that man may plan to kill him. And the people, community of that man may plan to kill him because he is a crossover from this side to this side. And here is one of the situations where wisdom will come. If this man tells the testimony and he blesses it abroad, you see it for the danger of his life, do you still want to encourage him and, and disciple him and make him strong before he you know, knows how to do it and publicize it? And the people, his people will know it gradually and they will understand he has now come to the Lord Jesus Christ and the urgency or the kind of uh, thing that comes to them as a shock, all that will go down gradually, and now you can publicize it everywhere. So point number one there is a peculiarity of silence before the people. Number two, the purpose of showing himself to the priest. Let's come back to Mark chapter 1. In Mark chapter 1, I'm reading the second part of uh, verse 44. Mark chapter 1, we're looking at the second part of verse 44. It says, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Actually, there's going to be a greater publicity, a more effective publicity, because he'll tell the priest, and the priest will say, come, come. We'll never see anything like this before. If they'll be true to their calling, they have to perform the ceremony that they ought to perform for a cleansed leper. 
And when they do that, they'll be announcing to the whole nation what we have not seen in a thousand years, in two thousand years. We have seen what we have not seen from the time of Moses. We have seen a ceremony, a rite we have not performed from the time of Moses. We are performing it now. It will be a great publicity to the old nation from the authoritative mouth of the priest. And so that's the reason why he said, Go and show yourself unto them. For a testimony, let's come to look at Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 12. Luke chapter 17, we're reading from verse 12. It says in verse 12, And he entered into a certain village, and there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. It was to be a testimony unto the priest. And when that testimony came, it will affect the whole nation. I pray. Our testimonies will be given out wisely, given out properly, given out to reach the majority and the greatest number of people in Jesus' name. Come to Psalm 78. Psalm 78, I'm reading from verse 5. 78, we're looking at verse 5. For he establishes a testimony in Jacob, and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers, that they should make them known to their children. That's the purpose, that those priests will make it known unto the rest of the nation. Now the man disobeyed that. Let's come back to Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, the publicity that separated the Savior from the populace. Let's see what the man did. We're looking at Mark chapter 1, verse 45. But he went out and began to publish it much. Is that what the Lord told him to do? I can't hear you. No. You know, there are people, they think, uh, they're doing something, uh, you know, if the Lord had not commanded him, if the Lord had not restricted him, if the Lord had not sent him to the priest to go and tell the priest, if the Lord had not said, tell no man, go to the priest first. All that he did here is enviable. All that he did here is wonderful. All that he did here is glorious. But, you know, something may do what appears good, what appears great, what appears glorious, what appears beneficial, but if it does that good thing in disobedience to the direct word of the Lord, it's still disobedience, it's still sin. And so we are told, but he went out and he began to publish it much. And he blazed abroad the matter. Look at this now, look at the consequence. In so much that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city. It restricted the Lord. It confined the Lord. It separated the Lord from the people it should touch and transform and save and heal and deliver. It changed the program of the Lord Jesus Christ. The city it would have entered, the place it would have got to. He couldn't go there now in so much that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city, but was without in the desert. Desert places. Even though people went to him there, you know, the discomfort that will give Jesus. He wasn't planning for that. To now go into the desert, in desert places, no accommodation there, no shelter there, no roof there, no protection there, nothing there. Was exposed to all the dangers of the wilderness because of, uh, you know, what this man had done. 
and they came to him from every quarter. Not minding that he didn't uh, have enough food to eat over there. He didn't have all the preparation he should have made because he was driven to the uh, desert because of the announcement of this man. You see, when we hear the word of God, we shouldn't just think, uh, you know, this is what I will do, and that's what I will do. Let's do the will of God. And let's do what the Lord has commanded us to do. And that will be a blessing to us and a blessing to everyone around us in Jesus' name. Somebody said, Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 55. I'm reading from verse 8. Isaiah chapter 55. I'm reading from verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways. Your ways, my ways, says the Lord. You see, the thoughts of the Lord was different from that of the leper. And the understanding of the leper was different from that of the Lord. And, you know, the leper just said, why shouldn't I tell people? Why shouldn't I publicize the matter? Why shouldn't I blaze abroad the matter? Of course I will. Forget what Jesus has said. No, you can't do that, disciples of Christ. You cannot forget what Christ has said you may not understand but that's what he has said he has a reason for that and he says for my thoughts are not your thoughts and your ways are not my ways says the lord for as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts will follow the thoughts of the lord will follow the way of the Lord. And that way of the Lord, we're going to follow and we're going to benefit from that in Jesus' name. But you know now, after that leper, after that he died on the cross, and after he was buried, and after he rose again, he's giving us another commission, another commandment. He's not telling us, like he told the lepers, don't tell any man, go to the priest. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, everybody will hear. I said, now, everybody will hear. But you know the problem for some people, when Jesus said, don't say anything, they go out and publicize. And when Jesus said, arise, move out, and go and publicize, then they keep quiet. He has given us our own commission. He has given us our own commandment. He has given us what we ought to do. And what he has told us to do, we will do. I will do. Somebody there, I will do. He sent, us, he has sent us to go out and to go forth and to do and to publicize the matter. As he saved you, tell everyone. As he healed you, tell everyone. As he giving you the word, go tell everyone. And as you tell them, the Lord will do what he did with the people of old in Jesus' name. Look at Mark now, Mark chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 15. Mark chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 15, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, hold on, hold on. He had told them earlier, don't go to the Gentiles, only go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And that's what he did at that time, but now... It's risen from the dead. And the salvation of, every, of everybody is paid for and is purchased. And everybody ought to know. And now he says, and go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Look at verse 20. And they went forth. Somebody there, help me out. Read it aloud and they went forth let me hear your voice and they went forth and it says and they preach everywhere that's exactly what he has said he told the other man don't say anything to any man go show yourself to the priest he didn't obey but now he told the believers he told the children of god the disciples and he said go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and it says and they went forth and they preached everywhere the lord walking with them and confirming the word was signs following and the people of god said he has told us to go now now we will go 
He has told us to publicize the matter. We will publicize the matter. He has told us to declare it everywhere. We'll declare it everywhere in Jesus' name. Uh, come to uh, John chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 34. John chapter 4. For reading from verse 34, it Jesus says unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Say not ye, say not ye, say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. He's telling us now the field is there. And he's sending us forth to go and reap and to go and preach the word of the kingdom to the people. And he said, and he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto eternal life, unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying fulfilled, one soweth, and another reapeth. I send you to reap, whereon ye bestowed no labor. And other men labored, and ye are entered into their labor. He's telling us, go and tell them. Go and tell them. Are you hearing? Go and tell them. You will tell them in Jesus' name. John chapter 17, John chapter 17, verse 17, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth, as thou hast sent me into the world. You see that now, he sent us, because he said, as a father, I sent him into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Now we are sent us and we're going to do it. We're going to bless our brother matter. We're going to declare it to the people. We're going to bring the sinners to the Savior. And we're going to bring the Savior near unto the sinners. We're going to bring the healer near to the sick. The deliverer near to the oppressed and the helper near to the helpless and the hope of the whole nation and of the whole world. We're going to bring him to the hopeless. Now he's told us, go, and we're going forth. Anybody there? I said, we're going forth. Anybody there? I said, we're going forth. And we're going to place our brother Martha in Jesus' name. Uh, Acts of the Apostles chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 4. Acts of the Apostles chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 4. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere. What were they doing? What were they doing? Preaching the word. Now they realize that there's no restriction and there's no limitation, and they shouldn't close their mouths now. They are to tell, and they are to tell everyone, and they went out and they told everyone, and great was the result of that because many people came to know the Lord. As a result of that, Acts of the Apostles chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 19. Acts chapter 11, verse 19. Now, they which were scattered abroad, upon the persecution that arose about Stephen. They traveled, they went forth, they traveled as far as Phoenice and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but the Jews only. And then in verse 21, and the hand of the Lord was with them. The hand of the Lord will be with you. And a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. A great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Our time has now come to go forth. We will not be ashamed. We will not be afraid. We will go forth and declare the word of the Lord, the salvation of the Lord, the kingdom of God unto the people in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 14. I'm debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So 
as much as in me is, I am ready. Somebody there, I am ready. Say it aloud. Say it with confidence. Say it with consecration. Say it with conviction. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greeks. I will go. I will go. Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. We're looking at a man who was delivered. And as he was delivered, the deliverance once again was real, verifiable. It could be seen. Everybody saw it. We're looking at Mark chapter 5 and verse 18. Mark chapter 5, verse 18. And when he was come into the sheep, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. How be it, Jesus suffered him not, but says unto him, Go home to thy friends. Here is the commandment. You must know what he commands you. You must know what he has ordained for you. He told the leper for a reason, for a purpose, don't tell any man. Go and show yourself to the priest. And then from the priest, it will be a testimony to the whole nation. But now this man, this is a commandment he's given us. He saved you. Go home to thy friends and tell them. He's delivered you. Go home to thy friends and tell them. He's healed you. Go home to thy friends and tell them. He has cleansed your leprosy. Go home to thy friends and tell them. He has performed the miracle that people are saying we never saw it in this fashion. It was never so seen in Israel. Now he says, go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord has done for thee and has had compassion on thee. Look at verse 20. And he departed and began to publish. That's what the Lord told him. You'll do what the Lord has told you. You'll do what the Lord is telling you. He departed and began to preach in the capolis how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. And all men did marvel. You will open your mouth. You will say something for the Lord. You will publicize the Lord. And as a result of that, many will come to know the Lord through you in Jesus' name. John chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 28. John chapter 4, verse 28. And the woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city. And says unto the men, come, see a man which told me. All things that ever I did is not this the Christ. And then they went out of the city and came unto him. Will you bring somebody to Christ? I said, will you bring somebody to Christ? Will you bring your community to Christ? You'll bring them in Jesus' name. Verse 39, and many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him. For the saying of the woman who testified, he told me all that ever I did. So, when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days, and many more believed because of his own word, and said unto the woman, Now we believe. That's what they will say. After your testimony, that's what they will say. After your declaration, that's what they will say. And many more believed, and he said to the woman, Now we believe. 
not because of thy sin, for we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. This is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. It will touch you tonight. It will cleanse you tonight. It will heal you tonight. It will deliver you tonight. But now, after the healing, the salvation, the righteousness, the renewal, the revival, it's now giving us the word. Go back home and tell your friends what he has done for you. Lord, I will. Lord, I will. Say it aloud, Lord, I will. Rise up and receive, and then you will go out and reveal. Rise up and receive. It's here today. It's here today. What you all three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And Jesus has not changed. He's still the same. He saves, he heals, he delivers, he set free, and he's going to do it for you tonight. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, oh Lord, I'm here. You know that leper prayed, he said, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. If thou wilt, thou canst make me free. If thou wilt, thou canst make me whole. If thou wilt, thou canst make me totally recovered. Tell the Lord tonight, he'll touch your soul. He'll touch your spirit. He'll touch your heart. He'll touch your body. Ask him, ask him. The man was desperate. You must show your desperation. Or is it that you don't need anything from the Lord? No problem to address. No challenge to take off. No mountain to remove. Nothing to be cleansed. Nothing to be renewed. No fire to be kindled. The man was desperate. He knew he was unclean. He wanted to be clean. Unrighteous. You want to be righteous. Unholy. You want to be holy. You want to become so cleansed, so purged, so purified, that even you yourself will say, I never saw it on this wise. I'll do it for you. He specializes in cleansing the unclean. He specializes in bringing hope to the hopeless, help to the helpless. Salvation to the sinner. Recovery to the lost. Deliverance to the oppressed. He specializes in removing mountains. Century old mountain. Millennium old mountain. He specializes in removing them. Is able, always able, is willing, always willing, mighty, always mighty, powerful, always powerful, he saves, still does today. That's why we call him Jesus. That's why we call him Savior. When we call him Jesus, Savior, we call him by his name. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord 
shall be saved. He sanctifies. He'll wash you white and snow, purge, cleanse, purify. Give you the righteousness of the bride. Make you ready for his coming. A sanctifier. When we call him sanctifier, we call him by his name. His seeds are the finer. And he purges the house of Levi. Sanctifies, purifies, cleanses. That we might offer unto him our sacrifice, our service, in righteousness, purity, and holiness. He empowers, revives, renews us in the Spirit by the outpouring of the Spirit. If that will, that can make me whole. And it says, I will be whole. If thou wilt, thou canst make me righteous. I will be righteous. If thou wilt, thou can make me strong. I will be strong. If thou wilt, thou can make me bold and courageous and fearless. Yes, I will be bold, be courageous, be fearless. Is all in all for us. Is all in all for you. He wills your strength. He wills your upliftment. He wills. Your holiness, he wills. Your healing, he wills. Your complete inheritance. Yes, he wills. Tell him. Let him do something unforgettable. Your heart. On your tongue, your habit, your behavior, your Christian experiences, your courage, your steadfastness, your integrity. Standing like the rock of Gibraltar, firm, uncompromising, strength in the inner man. That's what he promises to do. And he says, I will. Let that, let that will become visible, real in your life tonight. He can do and he will do. Whatever it is we need to make our lives what our lives ought to be. And to make our ministries what our ministries ought to be. He'll build you up to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Tell him. He answers prayer. If we're weak, it's our fault. He can make us strong. If we're powerless, it's our fault. He can put his dynamite within us. If we're unclean, it's our fault. It can make us clean.
If we lack backbone, we cannot stand. We're like jellyfish, push us a little, we're down. Little temptation, we're down. It's a fault. Can give us backbone and strength, strength of character, stability and stamina. He can do all things needed by all people that call upon him. The Lord can make you clean, make you pure, make you whole, make you healed, make you free, make you delivered, make it to have a life that is purposeful, powerful, positive, pursuing. A change is coming tonight. Tell him. Thank him now. Thank him now. Thank him now. Thank him now. I receive. Thank him now. I've got it. Thank him now. I possess. Thank him now. I'm no longer the same. Thank him now, I am saved. Thank him now, I am cleansed. Thank him now, I am sanctified. Thank him now, I am filled. Thank him now, I am fulfilled. Thank him now, I receive. Thank him now, I am going out different than I came. Be clean. Be clean. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. And the receiver said, Open your eyes, look at me. I rejoice with you. I rejoice with you. I rejoice with you. It is done. Is it true for you? Where are you there? Father, in the name of Jesus, you're a good God. You're a loving God. You're a mighty God. Jesus, our Savior, thank you for your love. You love everyone. You have touched everyone. Lord, I pray, put a smile on every face in Jesus' name. All that wall of demarcation, that puts any unclean person, any powerless, impotent person outside, and it's like they cannot be in the congregation of the victorious. Oh Lord, break down the wall of partition tonight in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, for everyone. Everyone will be a receiver tonight. All those who have called upon you, cried unto you for cleansing. Cleanse everyone thoroughly in Jesus' name. Save everyone with assurance in Jesus' name. Sanctify everyone with verifiable sanctification in Jesus' name. Empower everyone. Embolden everyone. Energize everyone with visible courage and boldness in Jesus' name. Give everyone assurance that everyone's prayer has been answered. Let there be a confirmation in every life. And as your people go, your joy will go with them. Your assurance will go with them. Your testimony will go with them. And when they tell people, they bring many to their knees before the Lord to worship in Jesus' name. Joy in every heart. Assurance in every heart. Power and courage in every heart. 
and boldness to face society in every heart in Jesus name what you have done will be permanent I thank you because we know you have answered in Jesus name we pray